Rodney Alcala, also known as the dating game killer, was a notorious serial killer who gained notoriety after appearing on the dating game. However, this appearance was just a small part of his dark and deadly history. At the time of his game show appearance, Alcala had a long history of violence and had already served time in jail. He was able to slip through the cracks of the criminal justice system, allowing him to continue his killing spree. Authorities believe that he may have killed as many as 130 people, making him one of the most prolific serial killers in American history. Alcala was born in 1943 in Texas and his given name was Rodrigo Jacques Alcala Bucher. When he was very young, the family moved to Mexico. At 17 years old, Alcala enlisted in the army and performed the services of a clerk for four years when he went AWOL and surprised his mother with his appearance at her home in LA. During his time in the army, Alcala had been accused of sexual misconduct and was diagnosed with an antisocial personality disorder. In 1968, Rodney Alcala committed his first known crime in Hollywood, California. Eight-year-old Tali Shapiro was lured into his car on her way to school. She was suspicious at first, but Alcala claimed to be a friend of her parents and wanted to show her a picture. He took her to his apartment, where she was attacked. Thankfully, a witness saw her get into the car and called the police. When they arrived, they found Tali Shapiro lying naked in a pool of blood. Alcala escaped, and the Shapiro family moved out of the country out of fear he would return. Following the attack on Tali Shapiro, Rodney Alcala fled to the East Coast and assumed the identity of John Berger. Living under this new name for years, Alcala attended NYU film school and even studied under Roman Polanski. It was during his time in Manhattan that he committed his first known murder, the case of Cornelia Crilly, which would remain unsolved for nearly 40 years. Eventually, Alcala was recognized and turned in by two girls at the summer camp where he worked, leading to his arrest and prosecution for the attack on Shapiro. Despite the lack of testimony from Shapiro, Alcala pleaded guilty to assault and served just under two years before being paroled. However, just two months after his release, he raped a 13-year-old and was sent back to prison for another two years upon his second parole. Alcala used his photography business to lure victims back to his home. In 1978, he appeared on the television show The Dating Game, and actually won the game. The Bachelorette, Cheryl Bradshaw, found him creepy and refused to go on the date. One of the other bachelors who appeared with Alcala recalled that he was very obnoxious and creepy. In 1979, Alcala approached 12-year-old Robin Samso and her friend Bridget on the beach in Huntington Beach, California. When Robin left her friend to go to dance class, it was the last time she was seen alive. Her body was found 12 days after she disappeared, 40 miles away. Alcala was arrested after Samso's friend gave a description of the strange man who had approached them at the beach. While in jail, Alcala asked his sister to clear out a locker he had in Seattle. The police found a cache of disturbing photos and a bag of women's earrings in the locker. Alcala was found guilty of Samso's murder and sentenced to death. Alcala appealed his conviction and won, with the California Supreme Court ruling in his favor. He was convicted again for the murder of Robin Samso and sentenced to death once more. However, he appealed and won again. By 2001, it had been 22 years since the murder. As the Samso family prepared for another trial, a development in the case occurred. 
Alcala's DNA matched for murders from the 70s, leading to the prosecution's motion to merge all five cases into one trial. Alcala's third trial began in 2010. This time, the prosecution had DNA proof to link him to the victims and showed a pattern to his killing. The prosecutors said that Alcala played with his victims, almost killing them several times before raping them and finally strangling them. He also posed his victims in disgusting positions and kept trophies of his victims. Alcala represented himself at the trial, questioning himself for five hours and using a different voice when asking questions. He called the mother of Robin Samso to the stand, trying to make her look bad to the jurors. Alcala was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death. While Alcala is in prison, DNA technology has connected him to more murders, and he pleaded guilty to the murders of Cornelia Crilly and Ellen Hoover. Using the photographs Alcala took, authorities are sure more victims will be linked to him.